Boilermakers picked up another road win last Saturday, knocking off the Nebraska Cornhuskers 28-23 before a sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. The Boilermakers now 5-3 overall and 3-2 and in Big Ten play. Purdue is home this week for a matchup with the number five and undefeated Michigan State Spartans. That game will kick off at 3.30 at ross Aid Stadium. And then Purdue will hit the road after that to take on Ohio State. So some uh, challenging games coming up, but also some opportunities for the Boilermakers. We're going to talk about those games, also the game last week against Nebraska and all things Purdue football with the head coach. You can join us at 888-246-2678. We're also on Facebook on the Purdue Athletics site. So if you have a question or just want to let us know where you're watching from, you can do that. A little bit later on in the show, we're going to hear from defensive back Chris Jefferson and also running back Xander Horvath. But we'll have the head coach to begin with. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. Ed Zubin, I think the Spartans have to be now in serious consideration to be among the top four teams in the big playoff release on Tuesday for the first time. And what a win for Mel Tucker. A great story developing in the Big Ten. David Bell gets it on the reverse. Tried to get to the edge. He'll pick up the first down in a nice game. And certainly the spotlight is on what happens with the offense today. Horvath leapfrogs one defender. He'll pick up another yard, maybe two, and that's it. Third and medium coming up. Sheffield in motion on third down. Cottle, easy pitch, easy catch into Nebraska territory, and that'll move the stick. Wisconsin didn't play that game and shut David Bell down. He'll fake it to Horvath in the flats. Anthrop has it, and he'll pick up a first down in the process. So Purdue on the move for its second possession again. Horvath, a game time decision, back in action, play action on second and long. Throw back, tight end has it, Payne Durham. Scampers down the sideline inside the 30, tripped up by Reimer. And he went on to a, obviously a great senior season. That's what he wants for his quarterback, Adrian Martinez. Picked off and intercepted Jalen Graham to the house. And just like that, Purdue strikes. Touchdown, Purdue. Off the pick six moments ago. Martinez lost the snap. Dropped back at the four. And played enough football be considered in that category. Cottle on first down, important possession for the Boilermakers and the pass caught by Brock Thompson. That'll move the chains. Horvath, the full head of steam for the Boilermakers touchdown. Now that's one way to do it. Sideline reporter, she's been busy. She was firing hot dogs up here from the field during halftime. Got a little dicey as Martinez is brought down by Jenkins. So an active first half for Jenkins. I'm sure we're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross Aid Stadium. A lot of people are already checking in tonight on Facebook. Let's get a quick rundown on those. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee is with us tonight. Warsaw, Indiana, Hillsdale, Michigan, Chesterton, Indiana, San Antonio, Texas, California, right here in West Lafayette. Troy, Michigan, and Cumberland, Indiana. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And again, you can uh, let us know where you're uh, watching. And if you have a question or comment for the coach, we'll pass those along as well. First of all, Jeff, congratulations. That was a heck of a win. To me, there's nothing better in sports. And when you go on the road in a hostile environment and you look up in the fourth quarter and you see a lot of metal bleachers and empty seats staring because everybody's left to go home. And you did that on Saturday. Yes, it was a good win for our team. I really uh, was proud of them. Um, we knew going into the game, actually, Nebraska looked really good on film. They had played a lot, really a lot of close games. They had taken a lot of good teams down to the wire. They were playing with confidence, and uh, we knew it was going to be a sellout. Uh, so our guys came ready to, uh, ready to play. Um, you know, overall, offense, defense, special teams, uh, you know, by, by far it wasn't perfect, but we really hung in there, and we played hard, and we found a way to make plays when we had to, and it was just a really good team win. Uh, games like that, you need to have big plays, and I thought one of the biggest plays was the Jalen Graham interception because they were up 7 nothing. They had the football again. The offense hadn't get, really gotten in gear for you. Uh, it seemed like that just completely flipped the momentum and took the crowd out of the game a little bit in the first half. It definitely was a huge play. Our, our defense uh, you know, really did a good job. Uh, the first half, they actually moved the ball at times uh, and, and uh, had some big plays, but we got the big turnover that kind of – 
got some momentum back to our, our football team. The offense kind of, you know, we moved it up and down the field, didn't get a ton of points early in the, in the first half, but we, you know, had some efficiency and didn't turn the ball over. And uh, when we didn't get it, we were able to punt and back them up. And our defense, uh, you know, came out in the second half. And when we found a way to get a lead, uh, then they were forced to throw it more than they would like. And that's normally to our advantage. And then, of course, then we picked off three more passes. And it was uh, just a really good team win for us. You know, let me stay on the defensive side for a second. You always have that conundrum when you play a running quarterback. Do you attack or do you try to stay back and, and play in the lanes? You were able to contain him running-wise, but it seemed like you changed strategy a little bit during the game. What, what was different maybe in the second half than in the first half? Well, I think early on we were kind of keying on the quarterback quite a bit on defense. It allowed them to hit some runs up inside of us, and we uh, definitely adjusted that at halftime. We wanted to make sure, you know what, I know – you know, he's a good runner, but uh, I don't think they really want to want run him as much anymore. They want to hand it off and let him throw the ball and not get him hurt. And I think because we changed that, we were able to stop the run. Um, we got a couple three and outs where they were just short. Uh, you know, and on our offense really, you know, in this game against a, a good offensive team, almost had about 40 minutes of possession to their 20 minutes. And that really, um, you know, benefited our team and kept our defense off the field. So that when, it, when they went on there, uh, they were fresh and uh, they played well. So I just think, you know, a lot of little things we did better helped us get over the hump. And uh, because of that, we were able to pull out the victory. You mentioned the almost 40 minutes of possession. Part of that, you, you were able to get your running game going. You didn't run it for a ton of yardage, but more than 100 yards. And you made them respect the run, which opened things up, it seemed like, for your passing attack. I think so. When we played them last year, we had negative two yards rushing, and I could tell, you know, just watching the field, they were playing the pass. A lot of teams have been playing the pass on us, and, um, you know, we've got to have a little bit of balance and, and make sure that we, uh, you know, make the defense honor the run. And I thought, uh, you know, getting Xander back with King and then mixing uh, Jackson Anthrop in the backfield gave us a couple of different styles of runners, which was beneficial to us. Um, we were able to spread the field and, and gain some yards and force them to, to come down and, and play a little more traditional defense. And when that happened, we were able to throw the ball. I think uh, Aiden played a really efficient game. We didn't turn the ball over. We had a lot of completions, high percentage, uh, and a couple of touchdown passes. So uh, it was just a really good, you know, team effort. And I thought the offense kind of, you know, executed. We weren't able to get a lot of big plays, but we executed. We were efficient, uh, and, we, and we, you know, controlled the ball quite a bit. We talked to Jackson on the field after the game, and he said it kind of took him back to his high school days here at Central Catholic, where he lined up a little bit in the backfield, lined up as a receiver. He's a guy that is a great utility offensive player for you and can do a lot of things and do them pretty well. It was a great day for Jackson. Uh, you know, special teams, returning kicks, caught some balls at receiver, put him in the backfield. He had five carries for 25 yards. Uh, really had some elusiveness back there and uh, can kind of shake and bake a little bit. And... Uh, you know, definitely provided a spark to us. So he's, he's just somebody that we got to continue to, you know, share the wealth with and, and get him his touches and let him kind of operate and, and do his thing because he's kind of just got that shiftiness to him that's really beneficial to, for our team. All right, you're listening to the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group. Back with more from Wolfie's after this from Learfield. She's been busy. She was firing hot dogs up here from the field during halftime. Got a little dicey as Martinez is brought down by Jenkins. So an active first half for Jenkins. What a scene it will be, and the guest list has been phenomenal. Who knows, Pacino may call in. Jalen Graham, George Karloftis. I want to say Big George told us sacks are overrated. He's all about the pressures. This modern age of collegiate offenses. Dangerous pass. It is an intercepted again. It is. It would be fun. Forget Absolutely. paintball. Forget paintball. It's We're completely illegal. Dogs. Off the rails in Lincoln. Yant with his first touch of the second half. Bottled up, sent backwards. Trying to take this game over as we speak. O'Connell heaves it. Bell has it for a big first down. Brought down near the 25 by Taylor Britt. He got the best of number five that time. O'Connell in zone. Touchdown wide open in the back. Milton Wright. O'Connell, end zone, touchdown Purdue, Jackson Anthrop. A brilliant play call and design, better execution. 28 to 17, Zubin, our score halfway through the fourth. And Kelly, Nebraska needs to get to work and in a hurry across the middle. Pass sails and it's intercepted by Cam Allen. 
third pick of the game for Martinez. And the Boo Birds are out in Lincoln. Absolutely putting a cap on Nebraska's run game and forcing Adrian Martinez to make plays in the pass game. Wide open was Allen, and it's going to be intercepted off the carom. And Ron English is a defensive back guy, and so he focuses more on the coverages, and it's been working in for Purdue this season. 430 Pacific on ABC. Third down and long. Tunnel screen is there. Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group. Boiler up and hammer down. Another good crowd on hand here at Wolfie's. OG Dave and the folks taking care of us. And I understand over at the table in front of us, it's Katie's birthday today. Uh, Katie, I was told, was 20. My shoes are older than 20, but if that's the case, congratulations and happy birthday happy to birthday, you. Happy birthday, Katie. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about those takeaways that you've had here. Ten takeaways in the last three games after struggling to get those in the first five games. Was it a case of being due? Is there anything that you're doing differently on the defensive side that's causing those takeaways? I think it was a combination of just a couple things. I think early in the year we actually got the ball on the ground quite a bit and uh, just didn't recover it. And... Um, you know, so that's probably half of it. Uh, the, the ball just didn't bounce our way. But I do think that, you know, because we're guarding guys closer, uh, we're more aggressive in our approach to defense, and we're making them throw it over our head and, and, and not just, you know, playing way off of receivers, uh, we're challenging rights, routes more. And uh, I think with the combination of that and the combination of really when we've gotten a lot of picks is when we've gotten, gotten a lead and we've made a couple of teams throw the ball more than they wanted. And when that happens, it's to our advantage because we are going to sit on some routes and we're going to play in front of people and we're going to read the quarterback's eyes and we're going to take some chances. And, you know, as you saw in the game, you know, they probably had a couple open guys deep that they didn't hit, luckily for us. And we've got to be a little bit better with that because there was a couple of times our, our free safety was jumping out of the middle of the field when he shouldn't have and uh, we, we can't do that. But uh, we were being aggressive, and uh, because of that, we got turnovers, and uh, the ball bounced our way. And I just think that uh, you know, getting a lead is, is definitely uh, beneficial to our team. All right, we got a couple of callers standing. Well, let's go to Daryl from Philadelphia. Daryl, what's your question for Coach Brom? Hey, first of all, I want to say congratulations on the win. Those guys are playing with heart, and uh, you can definitely notice the um, increase in um, productivity from the defense as well as the offense which is to be expected. The offense just come along a little bit slower than D, but doing well. Uh, my question is, with this being a matchup game, I think that basically both teams are even. Are you going to be a little bit more aggressive on the um, defensive side, kind of like a learning lesson from Wisconsin? I just kind of felt like we let up a little bit in the second half, and they were able to get away with a few extra running plays. But um, are we going to be a little bit more aggressive on the defensive side for the whole game? Well, thanks for the call. Those are <clears throat> really good comments. You know, really our goal is to be as aggressive as we can, and uh, we want to err in that aspect. Um, you know, occasionally you're, you're going to pop some runs here and there, and they're going to make a pass play, And uh, but we do want to be aggressive. We do want to challenge things. I think against Wisconsin, offense didn't play as well as we would like, and uh, they kind of wore us down in the second half running the ball, and they were big and good up front, so I give them a lot of credit. It's, it's a really good football team, and um, you know, yes, without question, we got to stop the run. They've got a Heisman Trophy candidate running back. We've got to make sure that we do a good job of containing him and tackling him. We had a couple, as you saw in the Wisconsin game, I didn't think we tackled as well as we, we, we could have and should have, and that hurt us. So it was just kind of a combination of those things that uh, when a team's running the ball every play like Wisconsin, you know, occasionally they're gonna, you're going to pop a few. So we just got to continue to work on it. Our guys have worked hard. We had a spirited practice today. Our guys were getting after it. We understand that we got another opportunity against a really, really good opponent that uh, is hot right now and uh, has played really good defense and has run the ball uh, extremely well with a, with a great runner. So, yes, the, the approach is going to be as aggressive as we can uh, while trying to eliminate, you know, as many big plays as we can. But we do want to take chances. We do want to get guys up in there and give them a chance to make plays and make sure that we, we go down swinging. All right, let's stay on the phone lines. Let's go to Don in Indianapolis. Don, go ahead with your question for Coach Brown. Yeah, uh, good evening, Coach. Uh, good luck on Saturday. It, it'd be great if you guys can beat the Spartans. But uh, I had two qu quick questions. Uh, would you rather fair catch uh, kickoffs or would uh, and take it on the 25, or would you rather take a chance and run it, run it out? And my second question, have you figured out what's wrong with Michael Finneran? Earlier in the year, he was kicking – 
every uh, field goal, and now the last couple of games he can't hit anything? Well, those are good questions. I think with the first one, you know, that's a, a topic we discuss uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, as we study the film, if, if they have a kicker who's really, really good and isn't going to kick it out of the end zone, but he could, but he wants to just hang it really high and kick it inside the 10-yard line, more than likely we probably will fair catch most of those. Now, if the ball's not as high and it's uh, not out of the end zone, we're probably going to try to return it. So we always kind of go into the game with a plan on that, and then we adjust it as the, as the kicker's kicking during the game and how's the wind and what's the elements. Uh, but you, you, you see more and more teams on, on high kicks inside the five, especially, but sometimes inside the 10, fair catches. So that is uh, on the table. We've had a couple, unfortunately, you know, drops that have hurt us where we've got bad field position that we have to eliminate those. But, uh, yes, that's always a question. And then on Mitchell, you know, Mitchell's just kind of lost his confidence. Um, you know, if you want to get in great detail on it, you know, there's some times where, you know, he's been king, kind of kicking the ball on, on the toe of his foot instead of the, the meat of his foot. And uh, as we've gone back and, and watched uh, extensively, you know, I kind of noticed that I think our, our holder was holding it a little bit too tight to his body. And we need to get the ball fully set right before the kick. Even if we've got to spin it slightly, it's got to be set uh, before the kicker kicks because uh, that will throw him off. So it's really a combination of a lot of small things that, you know, we, we've studied extensively. We've worked on it all week. Um, he's had a good week of practice. Has he missed a few? Yeah, he has. But he's had a good week of practice. He's kicking it better. And we've adjusted, uh, you know, the holding a little bit to kind of see if that can help. But at the same time, it all comes down to confidence. And, uh, you know, he's just got to practice as hard as he can. And when he takes the field game day, he's got to believe he's the best kicker in the nation and go out there and prove it. All right, we've got to take a break. Uh, we'll have more with the head coach in two minutes. It's the Jeff Prom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. things I saw since that Michigan State match that have really impressed me, just in the way that some people have just been really getting better. Raven Colvin playing like she's a seven. Yeah. 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 Talk about somebody that sets the tone. She set the tone early, and she set it in the middle, and she set it at the end. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross Aid Stadium. We're in that crossover night right now. We've got basketball and football, the first and only men's exhibition game tomorrow night. Rob Blackman and Bobby Riddell will have that one starting at 7 o'clock. Rob will be filling in the next two weeks here on the Jeff Brown Show because the women's basketball team is going to be on the road the next two Wednesdays, including a game in your old stomping grounds, Western Kentucky. I'll see Diddle Arena next week for the first time. That'll be fun. Uh, let's catch up a little bit on our Facebook uh, watchers tonight. We've got uh, Anna Texas checking in. We had Philadelphia. We've already heard from Daryl on the air. DeMott, Indiana. Brownstown, Indiana. Castleton, Indiana. Crestwood, Kentucky. Marietta, California. India. Not Indiana, but India. We have someone in another continent tonight watching us, so thank you for that. Denver, Colorado. 
Danville, Kentucky, and I believe that'll catch us up. And Lowell, Indiana. A couple of questions here. One question, uh, Jeff, somebody wants to know, if you script plays to open a game, and if so, how many plays do you script in advance? Yes, uh, for years we've always scripted. Uh, we call it the first eight, and sometimes it becomes ten, but uh, we'll script the first eight. And, you know, I don't always stick to it, but we try to kind of, you know, practice those uh, as we get towards the end of the week uh, over and over again so our guys know what to expect. And then uh, we'll have a small list of the next, you know, possibly 15 to 25. Doesn't have to go by script on that. But, uh, you know, we have an idea. We, we've uh, – all of our coaches put a lot of time and effort into you know, trying to get the, the best plays we can to help our guys win and have a good balance of what that is. And, uh, you know, it's important that as coaches we do our job and put our players in the best positions to succeed. And I think they know that we're going to work extremely hard and we expect them to go out there and play really hard. When you come into any particular game, how many plays do you have available? Now, you've got a laundry list that you can choose from throughout the season. But if you're going into a game, let's say the game Saturday, how many plays are you choosing from for that game? Well, here's what we like to do. I like to have enough bullets in my holster, and I've been in, on some staffs where you come in and you don't have many, and uh, it sounds great, but when the game gets going, if things aren't going the way you want uh, and it's not on there, you can't call it. Uh, so what we do is, you know, throughout the course of the year, we have a, you know, a master list of our plays, and uh, we have an idea of what we like, what we want to do. But as we practice during the week, whatever plays we practice become highlighted plays, and those highlighted plays, the ones we practice, that's what we try to call – Almost 100%. Now, um, and, and that equals quite a few plays, but still, it's not a, a ton. It, it's, a, it's a good percentage of plays, uh, but it's not nearly what we, we know and what we fully practice throughout spring and fall camp. Uh, but what happened, if for some reason something's going bad or we've got a change or they're doing something different, we can go back and we can talk on the side and say, hey, you remember the one play we worked at? Or we want to try to look at that and, and, and because they're playing this way. And, and sometimes we'll do that, but for the most part, Whatever we've practiced during the week, that becomes highlighted and becomes a part of the game plan, and we try to stick exactly to that. All right, another question tonight on Facebook. Uh, what does Purdue have to keep doing to ensure they get to a bowl game this year? Now, the easy answer is win at least one more game. You have to have six to be bowl eligible. Is that something, though, you talk about as a team? Do you talk about bowl eligibility? Do you talk about the Big Ten West? Where are those conversations on a weekly basis? Really, before the season, we'll, we'll set our goals out and we'll talk about those things uh, very briefly. And then once we kind of get going, our mantra is a one-game season. And, you know, we'll allow the fans and our parents and our friends to talk about all that stuff because that's college football. We want them to enjoy it. But for us, I tell you, you know, it's a very competitive uh, conference. It's uh, competitive every week. And, you know, you really your whole focus has to be on trying to do whatever you can to figure out a way to win. And I think if we just – concentrate on that and we learn from our mistakes the previous week and even some of our good games the previous week of how to you know practice again and get back to doing all the small things right then you'll have a chance to win so really for us you know it's about Michigan State and uh, how can we figure out a way to beat these guys and uh, we want to go out there and compete hard and see if we can get it done. When I watched the Illinois Penn State game the week before they had quite a few plays where they had seven offensive linemen two tight ends a quarterback and a running back you, uh, you had a little bit of that yourself this week. You had seven offensive linemen on the field for a play against Nebraska. Is that something we'll see more of as the season goes on? Well, we, 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 we put in a package uh, of that, and, uh, you know, we really didn't get to it. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's our strength right now. We've got some tight ends that are banged up. Uh, we have some young offensive linemen that – when we put them in there, they're going to be ready. I just don't know if they're quite ready yet, but um, it's always on the table. So we, we do have a, a small package of runs uh, in that set, um, and we, we carry a, just a few of them every week, and we probably continue to do that, but I don't know if we'll, we'll truly get to it. But, uh, you know, if the game swings a certain way and we feel like we got to, we, we, we for sure will. All right, we need to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking with Chris Jefferson. This is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group from Learfield. A lot of great moments around here. Listen up, we had a lot of great moments around here, okay? But for you guys to work your tail off after last week, okay, you suffered a tough loss, okay? You came back into this environment, you played against a good team that was playing well, 
and really you, you kicked their tail pretty daggone good, okay? You played to the end, okay? We talked about give everything you got and have no lit up, okay? And you guys did it. Every one of you. Every one of you on the field, everyone on the sideline, okay? And that's what it's about. If you just worry about that, good things will happen. Maybe not every single time, but more than likely it will. So that's all you got to do. You got to stay together. You got to understand the small things it takes to be great and just go about it every day. But well, couldn't be proud of you guys, okay? Tremendous effort, tremendous win. Congratulations and great job. Let's count it down. Here we go. And Nicole Kevazia had a chance as well for Purdue, but here's Griffith with a shot to score. Number 15 for Sarah Griffith. And she breaks Bailey Kalinski in the second half. One nothing Purdue. If Patrick finds Lambert, Lambert gets it out wide to Jones, and then Jones floats this beautiful ball in. It gets headed out by Jones, and then Griffith finds the knockdown to bury that home. But Purdue finds themselves in great positions all throughout that sequence to be able to find this opportunity. It's for Ohio State to Dukovic right to Bova. Bova's biggest save of the afternoon. And Ohio State runs out of time. Sarah Griffin with her Big Ten best 15th goal of the season leads Purdue to a 1-0 win over Ohio State in the quarterfinal. And the Boilers play Michigan on Thursday. <laughs> There were things I saw since that Michigan State match that have really impressed me, just in the way that some people have just been really getting better. Student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Rondale Moore had three catches last week as uh, Arizona lost for the first time this season against Green Bay. Rondale so far this season, 29 catches on the year with a touchdown. Ricardo Allen coming off an injury for the Cincinnati Bengals has had seven tackles on the season. Still looking for his first pick. He has 11 career interceptions coming into the year. And Juwan Bentley in New England knocked off the uh, L.A. Chargers over the weekend. And Juwan had five tackles. He's got 37 tackles and a forced fumble on the season. Joined now by Chris Jefferson, who comes to us by way of Euclid, Ohio, which is right outside of Cleveland. Yes, sir. And also comes to us from Findlay, where you are a two-time first-team All-American Division II football player. So first, congratulations on a great career. Thank Let's you, talk man. about your path first from Euclid to Findlay. What, uh, what led you in that direction to start your college career? Uh, yeah, when I was getting recruited out of high school, I, um, I came out, I had about three Division I offers. Um, I didn't really know how the recruiting process worked, so I took too long to commit. I ended up losing all of those offers, and um, Finley was just right there, and uh, I pretty much only had that place to go to, so I committed to Finley, and I just went on from there. Well, and you stuck with it. Twelve career interceptions there, including a pick six. So when was it time then to try to make that leap and go into the Big Ten and, and, and try your hand in a larger pool? Yeah, throughout the time my time at Finley, um, I was growing and stuff as a player, and it came a point where I just felt like um, I was declining and I just needed to, you know, branch out for myself. And, and I, I just want to be the best football player I can be. So that was something for me, just taking on the challenge, taking on the risk, and I believe in myself, so I'm going to bet on myself every time. Football is football, but what's the difference between playing in Division Two and Division One? Um, yeah, you're right. Football is football. These guys are, you know, they're bigger, stronger, and faster. I'll say the biggest difference is, you know, everyone looks like they're, you know, they, they big. Yeah. Everybody looks big. You know, some guys may not be as, uh, as talented, but, you know, they, they look like they can run. They look like they're fast and, they're, uh, you know, they're bigger and stronger. But um, uh, that's probably the biggest thing. And then, you know, everyone's smart at this level. Uh, when I was at Finley, I've said before, 
when I was at Finley, I felt like I was a very smart football player. But, you know, at this level, everyone's smart. So, you know, um, it, it just challenged you in more. And that's, that's, that's something that I was looking for, you know, because I'm being challenged in all areas now. When you decided to make the move, what was it about Purdue that drew you here to West Lafayette? Um, that's a great question. I, I guess I just – it's crazy. I really had a feeling um, – my whole time being at Finley that I was going to end up here, and I didn't know anyone at Purdue. But uh, when I was at Finley, I would just be looking at Purdue scores and stuff. Um, <laughs> I remember watching, you know, some of the games and watching, like, the stats to see if they needed help in the back end. <laughs> um, I remember watching, you know, people they were recruiting huddle tape to compare mine against mm -hmm. theirs. So, um, yeah, I just always had a feeling. And then when I came here, um, I just felt wanted. Like, when I came here, they didn't treat me like I was a Division II player. You know, they treated me like I was supposed to be here. And I just loved that. Like, and my family felt it. You know, my parents, my brother felt it because they were up here with me. And we were all just blown away by that. So, I, I, as soon as I came here, I knew I wanted to come here. One of the great things about coming to a place like Purdue, you're going to be challenged every day in practice. Talk about trying to cover a David Bell and a Milton Wright and some of these guys every day out on the practice field. Man, practice is crazy. Um, and, and really being challenged by the coaches as well, you know, because, you know, you, you don't – you want to follow in, in their game plans and what they're coaching. But, man, going against D. Bell – that, that he's the best player I've ever seen play, you know. And I've seen some good guys, mm -hmm. you know, in high school. Um, you know, I went to a, a prestigious high school in Cleveland. So, and then at Division Two, you know, we had a guy go to the NFL from Finley every year. So, um, but man, D. Bell is so different. Like he's he's crazy. So, but uh, it's it's good. And uh, Milton, T.J. Sheffield, you mm -hmm. know, going against Deion yep. Birch. You know, it's crazy. I'm seeing some of these younger guys like. Um, like Dion, you know, he's a freshman and he's going to be special. He's going to be special. So, you know, it's just, it's just a blessing to go against them and stuff like that. But yeah, practice is definitely a challenge and that's something that, uh, um, I, I take challenge to every day. Speaking of special, let's walk through that first interception as a Boilermaker last week coming in a sold-out <laughs> crowd at Nebraska. You got a deflection. You were in the right place at the right time, but had yeah. to do a little bit of a Superman leap to get it. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 all Mac. That's a great play by um, uh, Diedrich Mackey, um, number one. And then, yeah, I was just there at the, at the right time. So you know, I, I was giving him peas all after the game, just saying thank you, thank you for tipping that up and letting me get my first interception. Well, Chris, if you wanted to play against the best, you've got your opportunity here the next couple of weeks. Michigan State and Ohio State, a couple no of thoroughbreds in this, and you've got a chance to make a statement. Good luck this week, and congratulations on a great season so far. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate All right. It. We'll have Xander Horvath joining us next. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group. We'll return after this from Learfield. As yeah, Zubin, I think the Spartans have to be now in serious consideration to be among the top four teams in the big playoff release on Tuesday for the first time. And what a win for Mel Tucker. A great story developing in the Big Ten. David Bell gets it on the reverse. Tried to get to the edge. He'll pick up the first down in a nice game. And certainly the spotlight is on what happens with the offense today. Horvath. Leapfrogs one defender will pick up another yard, maybe two, and that's it. Third and medium coming up. Sheffield in motion on third down. Cottle, easy pitch, easy catch into Nebraska territory, and that'll move the stick. Wisconsin didn't play that game and shut David Bell down. He'll fake it to Horvath in the flats. Anthrop has it, and he'll pick up a first down in the process. So Purdue on the move for its second possession again. Horvath, a game-time decision, back in action, play action on second and long, throw back, tight end has it, Payne Durham, scampers down the sideline inside the 30, tripped up by Reimer. And he went on to, a, obviously, a great senior season, that's what he wants for his quarterback, Adrian Martinez. Picked off and intercepted Jalen Graham to the house, and just like that, Purdue strikes. Touchdown, Purdue. Off the pick six moments ago. Martinez lost the snap. Drop back at the four. And played enough football to be considered in that category. 
Cottle on first down. Important possession for the Boilermakers. And the pass caught by Brock Thompson. That'll move the chains. Horvath. The full head of steam for the Boilermakers touchdown. Now that's one way to do it. Sideline reporter, she's been busy. She was firing hot dogs up here from the field during halftime. Got a little dicey as Martinez is brought down by Jenkins. So an active first half for Jenkins. At Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross -Aide Stadium. We'll try to catch up on some of our Facebook watchers tonight. Evansville, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Olive Branch, Mississippi checking in. Hello to you. Wisconsin is with us tonight. Attica, Indiana, and uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia. So thanks to everybody for tuning in. Hey, Madden fans, the Level Next Madden National Championship eSports Tournament is streaming now and is sponsored by Unilever which will donate one million meals to Feeding America. Watch the best college student Madden players compete for $100,000 in cash by watching on Twitch. Just search Level Next GG. Joined by Xander Horvath from Mishawaka, Indiana. And one of the questions we had tonight on Facebook was, how is Xander feeling after the first game back? And I was going to ask Coach Brown, and I thought, well, why don't we just ask Xander? He's <laughs> sitting right next to us. How are you feeling after your first game back? Uh, I would say it's better than what I expected. I mean... I was definitely going into the game thinking I was going to be a little sore after and after playing 30 plays of taking that much volume. Uh, definitely a little sore, but as the week goes on, it's getting better. So definitely back to where I need to be for the next game. You were injured in the game against Connecticut, which was the second game of the season. Was there ever any doubt that you would get back on the season in your mind this year? Uh, no, definitely no doubt. Um, I mean, that day, once I went and talked to the doctors and everything, they were telling me about four to eight weeks. So I was definitely trying to get back within that four, but I mean, had a little mishap of the infection but that only put me back out another week so I mean overall I was expecting to get back in Nebraska Wisconsin and uh, got back with Nebraska so worked out and you scored a touchdown you got hit at about the three yard line and bounced off that when you get down to the goal line uh, there's got to be a little different mindset I would think and it seems like you're pretty uh, intent on scoring when you get down that close yeah absolutely I mean there's the balls in your hand that's that's a game right there so there's a lot uh look relying on that teams expecting you to get in the end zone so in the other day at the end of the day you got to get in so whether you're lowering your pads or running through people or jumping over the line, you got to make it work to get in. When you're trying to stay in shape, what were you able to do during those those weeks that you were out to, to, to try to stay in as good a football shape as you could? Uh, for the most part, I could do everything. I could still do like leg curl, leg extension. I just couldn't squat and stuff, obviously. But uh, I was still able to do all my workouts the whole time. I mean, a few days after surgery. And then I was doing a lot of uh, the row machine and everything just to try to keep my heart rate and cardio up. And then... After a few weeks, I was able to do on, uh, go on the bike. So I was able to stay in shape the whole time and come back out uh, back to where I was. When you're at a game like Saturday and you see the crowd, the, the uh, home crowd filing out, do you notice that? I mean, could you notice that the stadium was getting emptier and emptier as the game went on? Or do you fo are you so focused you have no idea? Uh, to be honest, I'm usually too focused in the game. I mean, what, even when there's a packed stadium and the crowd's roaring, I usually don't focus on that. just try to focus on my assignments when I'm in the game. Make sure I execute everything correctly. Now, you've got a lot to deal with as a football player. You've got your uh, schoolwork to do as well. And I hear that you're g getting married at, at some point here down the road. Uh, give us a timeline on that. Uh, I think we're looking to do it July 1st of 23, just trying to plan everything around football because there's a lot of unknowns for that. So, well, uh, Let me ask the unknown. Have you decided what you're going to do in 2022? Uh, at the moment, I would like to uh, be done after this year and try to make it to the NFL, but there's still uh, – Few questions up in the air that need to be uh, determined. Okay. Can decide. All right. Well, I'm sure that your uh, your spouse to be will have a say in that and get used to that because that's going to happen. And that's that's a good thing. Well, she's a nurse too, so she can travel anywhere we See? go. So that works out. And I'm sure she was helping you get through the uh, leg infection and all yep. that kind of stuff and making sure you did the right things and yeah. didn't do the things that you weren't supposed to do. Absolutely. Always giving pointers. Tell us about this football team. We you know we we hear a lot about the the passing game, but in order to get a balance, and we saw the balance against Nebraska that you've been looking for really on the season, uh, talk about your fellow uh, running backs in the room because you all seem to have a different style and bring something different to the table. Yeah, we definitely all have different styles. But, uh, I mean, as you saw in last game, we had me, King, and Jackson on the backfield. Ben, we're all completely different runners. So I think that's definitely uh, something good to do in the game, and it's going to help us on offense because the defense is going to have to make adjustments to that. But if we can uh, continue to integrate that in the game, I think it's going to be beneficial to us to get wins. 
Do you ever sit back and kind of take it all in, the, the fact that, you know, you came here, walked onto the football team, and now here you are a starting running back on a Big Ten football team and a big part of this? Does it overwhelm you at all? Is it, is it surprising, or did you expect this to happen from the very beginning? I kind of had the mindset that this is where I wanted to be, and, I mean, I knew it was going to take work to get there, but, I mean, in high school I pretty much did the same thing, and, I mean, parents and stuff definitely helped me through that, but uh, always giving 100% effort and – don't put yourself back even though people are ahead of you just continue to work and work and it's gonna uh, pay off in the end well we just talked in the last segment to chris if you want to be on the big stage purdue is the place because the next two weeks michigan state and ohio state the nation's going to be watching chance to make a great statement here these next couple of weeks absolutely i mean i try to take it game by game doesn't matter who we play if you just focus on your assignment execute the play calls and do what you're told to do uh you can have positive outcomes and wins no matter who you're playing. Xander, it's great to have you back. Stay healthy the rest of the year, and let's finish November strong and uh, get into December and January with some more football. Absolutely. That's the goal. All right, we'll have the head coach back. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. She's been busy. She was firing hot dogs up here from the field during halftime. Got a little dicey as Martinez is brought down by Jenkins. So an active first half for Jenkins. What a scene it will be. And the guest list has been phenomenal. Who knows? Pacino may call in. Jalen Graham, George Karloftis. I want to say Big George told us sacks are overrated. He's all about the pressures. This modern age of collegiate offenses. Dangerous pass. It is an intercepted again. It is. It would be fun. Forget Absolutely. paintball. Forget paintball. It's We're completely illegal. Dogs. Off the rails in Lincoln. Yant with his first touch of the second half. Bottled up, sent backwards. Trying to take this game over as we speak. O'Connell heaves it. Bell has it for a big first down. Brought down near the 25 by Taylor Britt. He got the best of number five that time. O'Connell in zone. Touchdown wide open in the back. Milton Wright. O'Connell in zone. Touchdown Purdue. Jackson Anthrop. A brilliant play call and design, better execution. 28 to 17, Zubin, our score halfway through the fourth. And Kelly, Nebraska needs to get to work and in a hurry across the middle. Pass sails and it's intercepted by Cam Allen. Third pick of the game for Martinez. And the Boo Birds are out in Lincoln. Absolutely putting a cap on Nebraska's run game and forcing Adrian Martinez to make plays in the pass game. Wide open was Allen, and it's going to be intercepted off the carom. And Ron English is a defensive back guy, and so he focuses more on the coverages, and it's been working in for Purdue this season. 430 Pacific on ABC. Third down and long. Tunnel screen is there. Supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Purdue and Michigan State on Saturday. Kickoff at 3.30. Our broadcast starts at 2.30. One more question about Nebraska, and that is uh, it got a little uh, hairy at the end of the game when they scored a touchdown and kicked the onside kick. We've seen teams go away a little bit from the uh, big bounce kick off the tee and start this spinning stuff. Uh, were you happy with the way or were you satisfied with the way you covered that kick? And if not, what would you need to change going forward on that kick? No, we did not cover it correctly. Um, you know, the NFL really kind of went to that kick once they put in the new rule where you had to start on the line of scrimmage because you can't get there in time on a normal right. onside kick. Uh, but we knew that they had in the arsenal. They had, they had shown it before. Um, you know, what we're supposed to do when that ball is kicked in that spinning aspect you need to cross the 10 yard mark and get ready to field it when you cross the 10 yard mark then they cannot hit you mm -hmm. uh, they have to allow you to field the ball now as soon as you touch it yes they can hit you so what they do is they run down they try to get on the other side of it right. and hope that you don't cross the line and get it um, so unfortunately tj Sheffield was in that area and did not cross the line uh, now at the same time they hit him before, uh, you know, the ball crossed 10 yards. Right. So it should have been a penalty. Yeah. And uh, so it should have been a penalty on them, and they hit him hard. It was a, it was a hard shot, uh, and they're not allowed to do that until the ball crosses the 10-yard mark, and it was not called. And uh, 
we're, we're checking on to see if it's a reviewable play. We, we thought it was. Luckily, we got the ball, so we didn't ask for the play to be reviewed. But it, it should have been a flag. But, uh, no, we, we need to come across the line and field that. And uh, not that it's super easy because they're going right. to hit you right. as soon as you touch it. But you have to cross the line to field the ball. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, uh, it's tough sledding. I give uh, Payne Durham a lot of credit. Yeah. As you look at it, there really was no way we should have got the ball. Yeah, I uh, saw I saw the field level shot of that. He made an unbelievable play unbelievable. to leap in front of the, the Nebraska player who was about ready to field the ball. Unbelievable play, unbelievable effort. That's kind of personifies his personality, and uh, it, it, it made a difference in the game, huge difference. Well, you're going to need some unbelievable efforts against this Spartan team because they might be the biggest surprise in college football, and they've probably got right now the Heisman Trophy front runner, Kenneth Walker the third, the transfer from Wake Forest. What has made him so effective in that running game with 1,200 yards here in the first eight games? Well, they've really played a, played a clean season at this point. Uh, they've done a really good job of controlling the football, running the ball. Uh, even their quarterback is a good young quarterback who has athleticism and can not only throw it but can get yards with his feet. Um, you, you add in a good offensive line, uh, good tight ends. Uh, they've just been very efficient on offense. At the same time, their defense is – been a key to their their team as well. They've played really good on defense. They've been able to shut teams down. Uh, they play a combination of an aggressive approach to disguising a lot on third down, and um, you know just really really do a good job. They've they added 14 transfers last year along with their signing class. A lot of those guys are playing, and uh, they've just been very efficient. And they haven't beat themselves. And uh, you know when you get in competitive football games against good teams, those are very important things that you have to do. And, and uh, they've done them every game. All right, our final segment of the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group is coming up from Learfield. things I saw since that Michigan State match that have really impressed me, just in the way that some people have just been really getting better. Raven Colvin playing like she's a seven. Yeah. 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 about somebody that sets the tone. She set the tone early, and she set it in the middle, and she set it at the end. Makers and Spartans on Saturday at Ross Aid Stadium. 3.30 will be the kickoff. And uh, we want to say hi to Richardson, Texas and Brookston, Indiana checking in tonight as we get ready for the uh, Boilermakers and Spartans. Should be a great day for football temperature, I think, in the 50s. And uh, it's going to be dry. It's, it's November, and I think anytime we can get dry and anything over about 40 or 45 degrees, we're going to be happy. Sounds good to we'll, me. We'll take it. Yes. Uh, you've talked about Michigan State. You, you think about the footprints that programs have and the, and the words to describe them, the word that I always think of when I think of, phys, of Michigan State is physical. It doesn't matter. It seems like whatever year it is, they always have a really physical defense. They like to run the ball, and they like to hit you in the mouth and see how you respond. Well, that's exactly what they do, and they've done a good job with it, and that's kind of the uh, one of the winning formulas of the Big Ten is a lot of teams, that's their – that's what they try to do. They want to you know, run the football and uh, play great defense and not beat themselves and 
just be able to throw it when they need to. And, uh, you know, and that's why it's so important for other teams to make those teams do things they're uncomfortable with, which means finding a way to get a lead. If you can get a lead against some of these teams and make them throw the ball more than they want to, they're normally not as efficient doing that as they are at playing great defense and running the ball. So that's going to be important to us. It definitely was a huge factor in um, our win versus Iowa. It was definitely a huge factor in our win versus Nebraska as we got a lead on them uh, in the second half, and uh, they did some things that they normally don't have to, and uh, we found a way, way to make them pay. You know, the one thing you do look at, though, with this Michigan State team is they will take their shots down the field. Jaden Reed and Jalen uh, Naylor both receivers who average more than 18 yards per catch. So they're not afraid to take their shots. No, they're not, uh, and that's what they do. They're going to run the ball, run the ball, and then play action, throw deep, run the ball, run the ball, and, and then definitely take their shots up the field and keep you honest. So, yes, yeah, so we've got to play efficient football and uh, can't just be selling out for the run. We've got to guard receivers, but we still want to guard them tight. Uh, we want to put extra guys in the box when we need to and make sure we stop the run on both sides to the strong side and weak side and combination of all those things. And, uh, you know, it's going to – be a heck of a test for us, and we're, we're looking forward to Saturday. Uh, they've got a, a big front uh, that, that has been pretty stout against the run this season, but again, if you can get that balance, and it doesn't really matter how it comes. You know, they're not giving style points on the run game, but if you can keep that balance and keep them on their heels a little bit, it's got to open up the passing game for you Saturday. Well, they're a physical force, and, uh, you know, we've got to take what they give us, and, uh, you know, if they want to play aggressive we definitely have to throw the football and, and make some plays and uh, the more big plays we can get the better off we 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 will be at the same time if they're just gonna play like quite a few teams have played and really drop some guys back and drop extra guys in coverage we have to be able to make them honor uh, the run so it's just going to be you know let's, let's take what they, they give us uh, yet be aggressive in our approach and be efficient and uh, find ways to, to move the chains and get points. Well your fans have been outstanding at Ross Aid Stadium I'm sure they're going to have uh, full throat on uh Saturday with another opportunity to knock off a top five team. And as we've talked to both players today, tremendous opportunity for the program on the national stage again this week. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, that's what this Big Ten schedule is about, is playing great football teams. And there's quite a few of them in the conference that are playing at a high level. We get a chance to play pretty much all of them. So we're looking forward to Saturday. Jeff, good luck this week against those Spartans. Thank you. All right, the Boilermakers in Michigan State, Saturday at 3.30 at Ross Aid Stadium. We want to thank our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, and our producer, Ray Clapmeyer. Again, the Boilermakers hosting Michigan State this week and then on the road for the next two, playing at Ohio State and then playing up in Wrigley Field against Northwestern before closing out the season the final week at home against Indiana. Don't forget, we'll be right back here next week on Wednesday night for the Jeff Brown Show. Rob Blackman will sit in for me. And don't forget, Boilermaker basketball coming your way tomorrow night. Purdue against Indianapolis in the only men's exhibition game at Mackey. Our airtime for that one is at 6 o'clock. For the head coach, I'm Tim Newton. Thanks for joining us from Wolfies tonight. This is Boilermaker football from Learfield. <laughs>